Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason and thanks for watching. Now, you guys know I love portable solar panels and if you haven't seen my previous video where I compared 11 head to head to see which one performed the best, I'd recommend checking that video out. Well, I have two more to add to the collection and these are the Elikanta 120 watt folding solar panels. So let's go ahead and see if this stacks up, see if this is gonna be my new budget recommendation. It has a ton of adapters, it's super easy to use. So let's go ahead and take a closer look. Now the size and weight of this panel, it comes out to be a little bit over 11 pounds. When the panel's folded up, it's 20 and a half inches wide, a little over 14 and a half inches tall, and with the pocket on the back, it's about two and a half inches thick. Okay, so we got the sizing and the weight out of the way. Let's go ahead and talk about build quality. Now the panel has these rigid backer boards, so there's not much flexibility. So that should protect the solar cells inside. It has this really nice durable fabric. I've gotten this dirty multiple times. I took a damp cloth and just wiped it off and it cleaned up really well. Now it has these metal eyelets here and it allows you to hang it up on the side of your vehicle or to tie it down to the roof of your vehicle. Now it has this really nice flexible rubber handle. It's ergonomic and it fits your hand really well. Now when you wanna go ahead and open up the panel, you just push these two plastic clips and the lid flips open very easily. Now looking at the back of the panel, there's two things that kind of stick out to me. The first thing is this kickstand. It's attached with Velcro, so it holds it nice and tight when you don't wanna use it. it. Has this strap that keeps it from falling down too far. And then what's nice about these kickstands is if you were using this in the winter, you know, early spring or late fall, you'll get a really good angle at the sun, but I would not recommend using these in the summer because you don't need that much of an angle. So when you wanna use it, it is there, and so it's super nice. Now it has this nice pocket on the back because it allows you to keep all the adapters and cables hidden away. It's really easy to zip it open and flips completely open and inside you'll find 10 adapters. Now these adapters include the most popular sizes of eight millimeters, 5525 and 5521. So that should adapt to most power stations on the market. The next thing you'll see inside is this adapter cable that comes with Anderson power pole and aviation connection. It's about a foot and a half long. It also comes with four different carabiners so you can hang it up easily. And the best part about this panel is it has a 10 foot long cable so you can have the panel in the sun and then your power station can sit far enough away in the shade so it doesn't overheat. Now the solar panel does support USB-C power delivery. It's a 45 watt connection and it has a USB-A port that supports quick charging 3.0. So I have the panel opened up and it has four individual sections. Each section puts out about 30 watts. Now, if you look at the panel, I really like the white backer board, and it also has this nice ETFE uh, coating on top, which adds to durability and water resistance of the panel. Now I have a SunPower Flex panel that is scratched, and I wish it had this coating because I'm not gonna get any scratches in this panel. Okay, so now you guys know all the features and the specs. Let's go ahead and take these outside and do some real world solar testing. Now I'm gonna test these against some of my favorite panels to see how they stack up. Let's just jump right into it. Okay, let's do some solar testing. So the main purpose of this section of the video is to compare these 120 watt folding solar panels to other panels that I already have to see if they put out more power or the same or less. So today is a mid August day. Uh, we got pretty clear skies, a little bit of wildfire smoke from California. So we will see a little bit of loss of power on the panels, but that's okay. This is real world testing. You're never gonna get 100% uh, you know, output every day of the year. So let's go ahead and show you my setup. Okay, so I'm using this Blue Sky MPPT solar charge controller, and that's plugged into my 80 amp hour DIY lithium iron phosphate battery. Now to keep this voltage down so the charge controller stays in bulk charging mode, I have my inverter plugged in with a 200 watt heater so that should keep the voltage down so we get a hundred percent output uh, through the solar panels throughout this entire test okay so let's go ahead and talk about the panels that we're using for this testing now all the panels have been sitting out at the same time so they should be the same temperature i have them all sitting on a two by four and they're all facing the same direction so this should give us good results on each panel okay so the first panels that we're going to be testing are these sun power flex 50s now these are really efficient panels and i have them in parallel let's go ahead and see what we're getting on the charge controller Okay, so we're getting 77 watts, 76 watts in from these panels. So you can see there is a little bit of loss because of the wildfire smoke. Now the max I've ever seen on these are 98 watts. So this will give us a good baseline for all the other panels. Let's go ahead and check out the next panel for testing. Okay, so the next panel we're going to be testing is this Rockpals RP082. 
Uh, it's a 100 watt folding solar panel. Let's go ahead and see what we're getting on the charge controller. Okay, so on the Rock Pals, we're bringing in around 70 watts. Now that looks about right with the current conditions. This panel, the max I've ever seen from this was 94 watts. So uh, being about five watts less than the sun power, that's really good results for this panel. Okay, now it's time to see how these two panels compare to the others that we've tested. I'm gonna call this one number one. I have it plugged in. Let's go ahead and see what the charge controller is saying. Okay guys, we're bringing in 84 watts, 83 watts. That's actually a little bit higher than the sun power cells. So uh, definitely providing near rated output in these conditions. Uh, I bet I'd see pretty close to you know, 115 watts in perfect conditions. But uh, number one, bringing in really good power uh, for the conditions today. Let's go ahead and check out the next one. Okay, let's go ahead and test Eliconta number two. I have the wire plugged in to the charge controller. Let's see what we're getting. Okay, we're getting 86, 85. Uh, I did see an 87. So these are pretty good numbers. Uh, actually getting a little bit more output on this panel compared to the other panel. So um, like I said, these are rated a little bit higher. They're rated 120 watts but we are seeing more power than my 100 watt sun power cells. So pretty good results. Okay, so before I conclude the solar testing, just wanna give you guys a disclaimer. You may have different results here. You may see more power, you may see less. It all depends on your location, the temperature, the time of year, the time of day. There's so many variables. So just look at these results. They're an estimation of what you should see with these panels. You may see more or you may see less. Now, overall, I've been really happy with the performance of these two panels. For the cost and the performance, they're very good. In fact, they may stack up really close near the Balder 120s. Now, I don't have those Balder 120s. Those are Jeff's solar panels, but these may be a really good replacement. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and give my stamp of approval. These definitely put out good power. So what'd you guys think of those testing results? Now, I was actually pretty impressed with this solar panel. I'll go ahead and throw the results up on the screen so we can get a good overview of everything that happened in that testing. Now let's go ahead and talk about price. Now this solar panel comes in at $170 out the door with tax included. Now, if you wanted to pick up two SunPower Flex 50s, you'd be spending around $182. If you wanted to pick up the Rock Pals RP082, you're gonna be spending around $205. If you want to go ahead and buy the Rock Pals SP003, has MC4 connections, you're going to be spending $187. Now, if you wanted to spend $500, you could go out and buy the Blue Eddy SP200. The problem with this is I'm only getting 103 watts out of this panel. So I'm going to have to do some more testing, but I think I may have an issue with the solar panel. Now, you guys know I'm all about finding the best performance for the price, and that's where this panel fits right in. Now, the great thing about this panel is it's gonna work with most power stations on the market because it has the eight millimeter adapter, the 5521, the 5525. It has Anderson, it has aviation plugs. If you wanted this to work with EcoFlow, you could get an Anderson to XT60 connector. You could use that same connector on the EB55 because that also uses an XT60 connection. You could even get an adapter from Anderson to MC4 to work on any power station that had MC4 connections. So, so this panel is definitely gonna work with all the power stations on the market. I'm definitely gonna recommend this as my new budget solar panel option because it puts out a lot of power and it has all the adapters required. Now, there's only one other panel that would kind of meet up to this, and that was the one we recommended previously. That was the Balder 120. Now, the price for that panel came in at, I think, $181 when we purchased that, but now it's at $215. Now, the prices on these panels do fluctuate all the time. So if you guys are interested in any of these panels, most of them will work for your needs. So it may be best to pick up the cheapest one at the time, but currently this is the cheapest option because the Balder 120 has a $45 price hike over this one. Now, if you guys like all this comparison, uh, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you think all this content is down your alley, maybe consider subscribing to the channel. I'd love to have you guys coming back. I have some great videos coming out in the next couple weeks. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching guys and have a good day.